welcome. You're watching Insights in Medicine on InTime TV, the world's only global internet TV talk show for professionals peer to peer. And uh, we have a great program ahead focusing on cerebral aneurysm disease. I'm Dr. Rogan Gorel, and our guest is Dr. Bernard Bendock, uh, who is Assistant Professor of Neurological Surgery and Radiology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Education. He earned his uh, uh, degree, undergraduate degree, summa cum laude from Wayne State University in Detroit and his MD from Northwestern where he still is now of course in 1995 and uh, also did surgical internship at Northwestern and neurological surgery. What's also particularly uh, important in terms of our discussion of cerebral aneurysm disease is the fact that he also completed a neuroendovascular surgery fellowship. So in evolving areas like this that uh, span multiple specialties, Dr. Bendock is uniquely uh, situated, uniquely uh, qualified to talk about a rapidly evolving area, cerebral aneurysm disease, that has lots of implications for the general practitioner as well. So uh, welcome, Dr. Bendock. Thank you. Um, I hope I... I, I didn't do your background justice. Uh, Dr. Bendock sent me his CV uh, earlier in the week, and it's very th uh, thick <laughs> with lots of uh, speeches fine. and articles. So we clearly have important, you know, very exciting things to talk about. But the topic is advances in the management of uh, cere cerebral aneurysm disease. So why don't you s start out and just summarize for us the epidemiology uh, of cerebral aneurysm sure, disease, uh, etiology, and sort of the background. Uh, cerebral aneurysms is a very interesting uh, disease. It's one of the important causes of hemorrhagic stroke. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as you know, stroke is the number one cause of disability in the United States. Mm. And aneurysm disease tends to affect people at a younger age than ischemic disease. So there's a particularly uh, strong impact on public health. Now, the numbers are also interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that about 6% of the population has an aneurysm. Most people don't even know it. Six percent. About six percent. And when you say younger population, my understanding is, but correct me, uh, it's like the the classic forty-year-old, you know, middle-aged woman. Uh, uh, correct. Uh, you know, aneurysm disease old. tends to hit uh, between uh, the ages of forty and sixty. Although uh, younger people can uh, have an aneurysm, and certainly older people can too. But on average, hemorrhagic stroke in general tends to affect people at a younger age than ischemic stroke, which tends to occur more in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, whereas hemorrhagic stroke occurs at younger decades. So in terms of an impact on, you know, public health, uh, there is a, an important issue there. And when you would say impact on, you know, people have many years alive, they have uh, active families. And Correct. It's really, exactly. Obviously, every life is a critical situation, but these can be very tragic. Correct. You know, uh, we think that about 30,000 Americans rupture an aneurysm each year. Uh, uh, and when aneurysm rupture occurs, there's about a 10% chance of dying instantaneously and not yes. making it to the hospital. And of people who do make it to the hospital, only about half or so have a good outcome. Right. The other half have stroke or death. So the outcome, while it has improved over the last century, uh, progress is still need, need, needs to be made before we get better outcomes. And you said that